Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, whichever great part of this planet you live in. Welcome to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching Nature Now. And if you're new to my channel, you're in for a treat because I have no idea what's in this box. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna do an unboxing. I haven't done one in a while. And my friends over at the Orchid Supply Store sent me an email saying I have a surprise uh, box arriving. So I've had it for three days. So Ken, I'm sorry I haven't responded to you that I've gotten it, but I really wanted to wait because we've been remodeling our bathroom. So I figure when we're done with that, I'll go ahead and do an unboxing, which is this box right here. It's heavy. He says it's something new he's trying out. So I know he said he bought a new saw so I'm uh, for wood cutting. So I'm sure it has something to do with mounts. So, Let's open it. <laughs> I love surprise boxes. <laughs> it gets me excited. Ooh, I see some goodies. I don't want to cut myself. I feel like a little kid in Christmas every time I open these. Opening the package. Happy dance, happy dance, happy dance, happy, happy dance to the cowboy. <laughs> oh, I love this. You know, I have so many much bigger um, orchids that I need to mount. And lately, you know, he, because of his saw, he couldn't send me bigger pieces. Look at this. Yes, yes, I got the wood you have no idea how happy I am right now. <laughs> Hold on, because I need my eyes. It's early, early in the morning. As you can see, it's nice and sunny. Let's see. Nelson purchased a new saw, so I'm able to do pieces a bit larger. Here is some of my first cuts. Maybe not the cleanest, but I'm sure you can make them look beautiful. Thank you, Ken. Remember, it's for orchids, so if it looks rustic, it's perfect. Ooh, look at that. And what I love about uh, the wood that he sends me is that it's weatherproof. You know, it's, it's the kind of wood that it's never really going to, it's going to take years for this to actually go bad. A lot of it is uh, mahogany, maple. Um, what's the other one? I always forget how to, how to say the, the vine. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. It's really early, but look how pretty. And I love that they they still have the moss from what was growing on that tree I mean that is awesome thank you thank you Ken and of course I could definitely use this I've been um, using this a lot for my patio petalums again I started to repot them in, in sphagnum moss or sphagnum moss because it really is better I took them out of the clay beads I have some that are doing well but not all of them you know I want to like mount something right now these are so awesome you know what i'll be back i'm giving you guys a bonus i'm going to mount one of these for you guys in my surprise unboxing so you get a two fur today <laughs> i don't even know which one i'm going to use so i'm taking them all out so i can see which one fits better so i'll be back all right guys I have to start quick because the farm animals are starting to make noise and my neighbor's working here with his dog and so he's going to come out in the video yelling so let me see how I get through this one. <laughs> but I got everything I need. I had to find which ones I wanted to put. So anyway, I decided to pick this one which was the first one I saw. It was very nice. And this one because this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sort of like a sailboat and put this cute bubba film on here with the new uh premium premium grade orchid moss that i got from the supplies orchid supply store so i'm going to use that because bubba films do like to be on the on the moisture i <sighs> can't see always wear your gloves you don't want to get anything on your hands anyway and 
when you do these, if you're doing multiple plants, you want to make sure that you know your plants. See, I know my plants are not sick or anything, so I won't be transferring anything. But if you do uh, multiple plants and you don't know them, change gloves every time. That way you don't transfer from one to the next. All right, I hear the barking dog and the neighbor. <laughs> so anyways, this one's overgrown already. So I figured, you know what? This would be a perfect one. This is an insignia. I have. Welcome to the ranch life. <laughs> I'll be back after these noises calm down. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been an incredible challenge today. There was noise everywhere. Lewis is doing the final details in the new bathroom. I'll show you guys a picture of it later or a video. Came out really cool. Plus, my neighbor was working next door, so he was using the tractor. Then it looks like it's gonna start raining, so I have to do this pretty quick. All right, let's start where we left off. So I decided to pick these two, this one, and this one so they lay different now i got this insignia because i don't have a tag for this it looks very similar to the alada um but it's such a beautiful uh plant that i'm gonna put it in what in a mount because they do love to be mounted and as you can see she's due so you can see i just had her in a terracotta pot to hold her up because she kept on falling this is one of those um you know i need my eyes i insist on not using it all right so something like this at this level we would have to cut the pot very carefully so i'm going to cut it without disturbing the root too much and i will put it in fast motion starting now Alright guys, so it was really stuck in there, but I should have thought this over. <laughs> I tried. Today has been, like I said, a challenge, so, and I'm doing this on the fly. I wasn't planning on doing this. So this is the great thing about, oh, I feel the water, in cichlias. I personally, I like to leave the roots free from any type of medium they had as much as possible. If you leave some inside, it's no big deal. It's been there for a while. It hasn't hurt the plant, so it's not gonna hurt it now. I can't believe this day. It's actually raining. <laughs> what a day, what a day. I did my happy dance too soon. All right. I don't mind a little bit of water. Besides, everything here is supposed to get wet, so if it gets wet, no big deal. I have my cap on. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much a good amount because down here in the center, I could continue picking, but it's so it's so like embedded in there. I don't want to hurt the roots. I like to keep the roots as as uh, untouched as possible because when you start hearing crackling and things like that, you know it's not good. So, and actually the bulk of root with that um, with that little bit of medium gives me a nice lift. I don't have to flatten it so much on the board. So that way when you hang it, it hangs like this. How fun, we're doing this in the rain. <laughs> I love the rain. I just don't like to get drenched. You know, and down here we get these flash rings, which it seems is gonna be one of those. Because it's hey Morris! Morris likes it too. Alright, let's see. So what I try to always do is anchor the plant through the bulbs. So between the bulb and the roots, that's where I like to put the tie wrap. So I have it right in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right in there. And the great thing about these pieces of wood is that 
Ken over at the orchid store, the owner, he pre-drills holes in them. So you don't have to worry about looking for your um, drill or power tool just to hang your orchid. And he gives you several different options. He doesn't just do one hole, one hole here, one he gives one here and one here. So that way you can move it around the way you want it and according to the size of the plant. Ooh, I'm cutting it close with this one. It's a pretty wide. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it being tight, but I think I made it, I uh, cut this too short. It's like right there. It'll work. Talk about not not wasting any material. <laughs> it's right there. I could pull it a little bit more once it's in there and then twist it again because that way it secures the plant really well to the board. You don't want it dangling. Like right now it's dangling. I still have to put more. But this is more like the anchor right now. So your first one will always be the anchor to the actual orchid. And you want to press, as you see me pressing here on the side against a piece of wood, into the back and then pull on this. If you see that, you can still pull more. See, I just pulled a little bit more. You want to twist it again because that way it keeps tightening it more and more. It's almost like a key. See, now it's not dangling as much. But we always have to secure it, so we're going to do another one. This time I'm going to give myself a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so he has one perfect. He has one directly in the middle, and that's going to serve as the one that's going to hold it, um, sort of like sustain it even better. Because the first one is holding the sides, but you need something to hold the bottom. If not, it gets walk wonky and wobbly. Now let's see where he did the other hole. Ooh, it's right back here. Hold on. Is it? No. Oh, here it is. So he did it to a side, which is still fine. Because I could also anchor it on that side and then get triple security, which is great. I could tell you already, this is going to be a very happy encyclia. because when it just fits right, and I always say, when you cut these, save them, because you know, there's always that one piece you need that's a certain size. I save them all. All right. All right, I could put another one, but honestly, I think it's pretty good. This puppy ain't going anywhere. <laughs> and besides, in like three months, it'll definitely be attached to the wood. So I feel this is secure enough. I may tighten it up a little bit more. Yeah. Ooh, you hear that rain? <laughs> I'm singing in the rain. <laughs> there it is. She's a beauty. Now, to hang her, what I like to do, not this one, this one. These are old hangers that I keep around when I change my, okay, that's a little too much. <laughs> I like to put, like cut them all off and maybe leave, like in this case, I'm gonna leave two because that way it's a little bit stronger. So what I do is, by the way, this is all I did. I just cut. This is my old cut or my, my good one. I have no idea what I did with it. I've looked for it everywhere and it's like Houdini. So I use this one, which works the same, but it's a little bit of a challenge. So there, so now I have two pieces of hanging wire 
I twist them together. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them this long. It's hard to do this when you're wearing gloves. Mm, too long. I looked up because I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to hang it. You know, it's like you think you don't have any space and then you start moving things around. And you're like, oh, I have, I have plenty of space. All right. I give it about three twists around just to create sort of a, a lock. Don't want to do that. So here we go, you have a perfect little hanging. <sighs> Voila! All right, so I'm gonna go hang this and I'll be right back. Woo! It's a challenging day, but I'm okay. <laughs> I actually had time to go have breakfast um, while they were making all the noise. And I figured, you know what, it'll it'll get me reboosted with energy and I'll be able to do this better. Because I was, a, in the beginning, I was a little bit still like, just woken up, like not even 30 minutes before that. So. so anyways, again, I took one of the hangers that I had there and I'm gonna use it for this. But before I do that, there's two ways that I can do it. The easy way is to hang it and do it while it's hung. But I have to show you guys so I'll be doing it here. It's a little more difficult sometimes to do it that way, but now this is a Bubba Phillip. So we are gonna use Spag Moth. Well, this is actually New Zealand premium grade orchid moth, which is really, really good. That's, I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, this is from the orchid supply store. And if you guys want to order it, um, just give them a call. I'll put the information down below. They're really, really good. And I use this for my um, Paphio Petalums. Well, I like to mix it in with Paphio Petalums uh, with Bubba Films and Philanopsis because it keeps good moisture. And always pre-soak it when you're gonna start because you want it to kind of hold and be heavy. If you do it dry, it's not that easy. So, all right, guys. This one, this, this Bubba Film actually came from Lee from Lee Orchids in Hawaii. Hi Lee, shout out to you. And it has a beautiful white bubble film with some uh, simple red stripes on the petals. And I thought that this would be really, really cute to grow it in here. In this, uh, I have a couple that I'm, that I'm now growing like th in this style, but I don't have a bubble film. Now look how they put it with styrofoam. Do you know why? That styrofoam holds moisture, but it allows water to drain through. So I could do one of two things. I could add the styrofoams here, or I could just do it straight like that. And I'm gonna do it straight like that. You know why? Because I water every single day, and I'm gonna put this inside the greenhouse where moisture is contained a little bit uh, longer so out here, if I were if I was putting it out here, I would definitely leave these in and I would probably put clay beads underneath so it has good drainage because that means it's gonna get wet more often. But if I just do sphagnum moss and put it inside my quick tank greenhouse, I could leave it without being watered every, I would say water every three days and it's a lot less work for me. I need a, I need less. The more I buy, the more work I get I get involved in. So this, I'm simply just gonna lay the moss right on top. And I have to see how many holes are there. Usually with moss is a little bit more difficult because you gotta find where they drilled. So you wanna make a nice thick bed. 
because from my experience, I, I've learned that bubble films do like to stay on the wet side. But if you let them slightly dry out and then re-wet them again, it seems to work really well. Mine like it like that. If I wet too much, too much, too much, then they start getting yellow leaves. So when you're doing them on a board like this, you actually control the water a little bit more because it's not sustained like in a pot in here. It's sustained. And even though I always drill the holes a little bit bigger so there's more drainage, it could still yellow your... How pretty that looks. Now, I am putting it inside my greenhouse, so I may not even, let me see how many holes it has. You know what, I'll just, for safety, we're gonna crisscross it. Because I know that after a while, it'll start shedding. So let's fast forward this, so you guys don't have to wait and watch me sew this inside. All right, guys, so I had a little bit of trouble with um, with the moss staying there, but I kind of figured it out and it is going to lay flat. If it was laying sideways, I wouldn't I wouldn't leave it so loose on there. But since it's gonna be laying like a dish, it's gonna hold it and it's not gonna be where the wind is gonna rock it or anything like that. So now, let me see if I can do this with one hand while demonstrating. <laughs> I already had them, by the way, I already had them um, bent equally. So that way it's balanced. So before you put them in there, you wanna bend them equally. And on this case, I don't do it all the way up because I want the board to sit there. All right, so. We got one. And you will have to, you know, fix your, your wire after you put it in there because you have to bend it a bit for it to fit pr properly. And sometimes it doesn't come out even because the wood itself is not even, but you can like fix that. Hopefully in this case, we don't have to redo it. Nope, it's perfect. There we go guys. So that's my second one. And that is pretty easy as you can see, it really doesn't take that long to make. It takes longer to make when you're filming. <laughs> but when I'm doing these, I, I, don't, I normally don't take that long. But see right here, that's how I tie them underneath. It's almost like sewing. You just go sew through one side and you make like a crisscross and it should work well. So I will leave you with this. This is it, no more. This was unexpected. Always remember to put your, your tags next to your plant because if you forget and you lose them they get lost very quickly they're like socks in a, in a in the dryer <laughs> you put socks in a dryer and there's always one that goes somewhere to sock paradise or something but anyway that's it i'm glad that i did this for you because i wasn't planning on doing any mounting but this way i got something mounted and i really wanted to mount this one uh, because i think it's going to be a beautiful flower to showcase in this nice little hanging piece I almost forgot next uh, in two weekends from now on November 4th through the 6th I, I will be there Friday Saturday uh, the first weekend of November at the Crawl Smith open house and slipper uh, orchid slipper symposium I think is what they usually have in November and there will be great chats they have someone from Vietnam I don't remember his name but I did read it in the email so I'm putting all the information here <laughs> as usual so you guys can see and if you guys are interested in going it's going to be a really good one and as always Carl Smith always has great stuff to offer plus they always bring in vendors that are also excellent excellent quality and great finds so it'll be a fun time to meet you guys over there and I'm taking Lewis with me this time and Laz will be there with me too so 
thanks again for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button. You guys are helping me greatly. I'm almost at 4,000 subscribers, which is super, super, super awesome. And um, come back. Come back to the next show. I hope you like my Halloween treat, uh, treat with my Bubba Film. And now there's another one back there that will be showcased also as a Halloween flower. So stay tuned. I am Nelson. You're watching Nature Nell. And remember to always, always keep it green. <laughs> See you next time.